H2 and we look at H. pylori, right? We have some of these virulence factors. Can these be actually cleared out when you knock down the H. pylori? Are they kind of genetically there forever? They're genetically there forever, but when you functionally work, when you work to lower the organism, um, genetic expression can change. And then of course, you know, if you're lowering the organism, the genetic load is going to lower as well. So yeah, you can see both the virulence factors. And then we also measure um, antibiotic resistant genes on page five for H. pylori. And those, those can change based on, on retest. Um, you know, if you choose to do that, but, you know, I believe your what you've pulled up here is our sample report. Yep. Um, you know, it would be, it's, it's would be pretty rare to see, uh, an H pylori profile with this amount of virulence, but certainly the virulence factors can be really helpful at triage and decision-making, especially at right. those low levels, you know, like a lot of times we see, say a virulence factor can trump, you know, whatever the number may be typically depending on the virulence factor. Cause some of them are, mm -hmm sort of scarier than others, totally. um, you know, you, a lot of times practitioners will treat, you know, at, regardless of the level, if there is positive virulence. Now I've seen a couple of patients recently where we treated for H pylori, like using a lot of the good kind of no, well-known botanicals, whether it's garlic or mastic or clove or oil of oregano. And, and we've had a hard time moving the needle on some of that H pylori. <laughs> Why is that? Are you seeing a lot of resistance to uh, H pylori to even the botanicals? And any thoughts on that? No, I mean, I think with Mastica, I mean, Mastica is pretty well established in the literature um, and, and pretty effective. I do think dose is important. And a lot of the, you know, there's a lot of formulas out there, H. pylori formulas in the professional supplement space. Um, in my opinion, I mean, if you look at the literature of using Mastica against H. pylori, you're typically looking at like two to three grams per yep. day. Um, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of those combo supplements don't get that high. Um, and so I think a lot of, a lot, there's a lot of myths there that we're just not coming in with. So I can tell you clinically, I've seen some patients where we're using that level and more, and we're still having a little bit of issues. And then is, why does that happen? Is that just a resistance to the bug? Do you typically just recommend rotating in different herbals until we find that right one? What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's great if you're assessing and reevaluating the testing. We don't always get that. A lot of people will treat based on symptoms, and you know, there can be symptom residual. I mean, you can have symptom improvement without lowering the number. I mean, I find it. I find Mastica to be pretty pretty effective. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I'll combine it with some agents like DGL licorice, black cumin seed. Those are kind of the big ones. Um, um, and then there's always kind of the, a lot of times when you have issues clearing things, there's always the mm -hmm. issue of biofilms. There's always yep. the issue of what else is going on in the environment. Yep. Um, there's also this whole question about stomach acid and, mm -hmm. um, and whether or not, you know, so kind of the mechanism here for anyone who doesn't know is one of the misunderstood things about H. pylori or just not understood is that H. pylori I mean, obviously it's associated with the gastritis. It's an upper GI organism. Mm -hmm. If it has a lot of virulence, it can be associated with, you know, the scary things we think about, the peptic ulcer diseases, the gastric cancers, acute gastritis, reflux, GERD. But beyond that, the, the organism itself produces this enzyme called urease and urease mm -hmm. can neutralize stomach acid. Yep.